K-I-L-R Taylor Games Gamers, simmers, and pilots, I am the Killer Gamer, and it has been a long while since I have done a Twitch stream. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Twitch, sorry. <laughs> There's been a lot of things that have been going on uh, <clears throat> during the past year and a half. Some of you may already know that um, I've been in the trucking industry, and it's kind of hard to do live streams. Uh, when you're when you're out there I mean I can do like maybe a one or two hour stream but when it comes to actual flights yeah you know when full flights they sometimes take a little bit longer and if you're just hop skipping around on airports it's not entirely exciting <clears throat> but anyway I'm here I'm back uh, for a little bit anyway and we are going to be Going back to the things that uh, brought everyone here to this channel, which was the classic uh, flight sims. And we are going to be doing a crazy epic flight from coast to coast using Commodore, uh, the Commodore 64 Flight Simulator 2 along with the Sublogic Scenery Discs. <clears throat> so that is what we're... Uh, on right now we are in Los Angeles you may not uh, recognize Los Angeles but there it is <laughs> and it's a uh, full blue green uh, gray and white <clears throat> Now you may be thinking okay what path are we going to be going on well let's go ahead and show that to you so that way you can see okay so here is the map I painstakingly put all of this together this is all of the separate maps from scenery discs uh, 1 through 6 over on the west side and then 7 9 and 11 over on the east side. Uh, 8 and 10 were never created uh, by Sublogic. That's these uh, yellow areas right here. This one up here in the corner is Scenery Disc 12, which was never released for the Commodore 64, but it did come out for the PC and for the Commodore Amiga. So here we go. Here is the actual flight. Now, will I do it all today? I don't know. <laughs> but we'll definitely do it in parts. So we're here in Los Angeles. And we're going to be taking this route. Kind of follows the uh, Interstate 10. Going through Blythe, Buckeye, and then the Phoenix. And then we'll be going the Globe. Going up here to Gallup, New Mexico to Albuquerque through Tucumcari, Amarillo over here to Oklahoma City and then following the I-44 to Tulsa uh, what is that? Neilshu? <laughs> I can't even read it and then into Missouri, Springfield uh, Forney uh, was that Vickney? Vicky? over into St. Louis now you can tell there's a difference here between the maps on the west side they kinda like drew lines and circles and stuff but then things uh, <laughs> they got better once they started doing the later scenery discs so yeah St. Louis up here to Champaign and then down to Indianapolis Cincinnati and then we're 
uh, coming through uh, this way until we get to Washington DC and then up to Baltimore Philadelphia uh, New York John F Kennedy International and I thought about stopping there and I'm like nah let's keep going so we're gonna go we're gonna follow Long Island all the way over here to Martha's Vineyard so that that is the plan <laughs> like I said am I gonna do it all in one uh, stream I don't know I guess that depends on how many people show up so first order of business is getting all of our VORs set up here. So the first one that we're going to is Pomona, I think is what that is. It's hard to read it because it's all, it's like written, it, it looks like they put it on a typewriter is what it looks like. Okay, that's 31 miles away. And then, let's see, we were going to Palm Springs after that. That looks like 115.5. You have to do all this on the keyboard. Yeah, there's there's no mouse clicking or anything on this. So what we're doing is VOR number one up there in the upper right where it says 96, 94. Do you see that where I'm changing it? I'm centering that, hopefully, that's kind of like what you did back in the day, you, you used these old VOR navigation to get around, so we're going to center that, and that's going to be the heading that we're going to be taking. And we might as well change VOR number two and just get it kind of ready. So when it goes from off to two, then we can switch things around. We can make nav two over to nav one so we can see what our distance is and everything. Aurelio, hey buddy. <laughs> yep, Flight Sim 2020 and Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. Not going to see too many people doing those. Hey, RP Sims. How you doing? I've, I've been getting messages that you've been doing uh, streams lately. Uh, just about every day, right? I've been doing well. Had... We had a big move that we had to do, so that kind of took up a lot of time, and I wasn't able uh, to do a lot of truck driving uh, during that time. And I'm in the middle of um, getting my uh, medical card renewed, so haven't been doing any driving lately. Not until that actually happens. There we go. There's that fantastic uh, Commodore 64 engine sound that you all come to know and love. And let's just take a look at the scenery of Los Angeles so that way we can see how wonderful it is. See, look at that. Isn't that accurate? <laughs> just 
to kind of show you folks where I'm at. Although I don't think we can zoom all the way out, unfortunately. I think at one time you could. Or maybe it's with the PC version, I'm not sure. But there we go. That is Los Angeles International. Four runways, nothing in between. Yeah, this is back in the old days where you had to, you know, taxi around in the grass. <laughs> and which way am I facing? Not facing the way I want to go, that's for sure. Yeah, RP, LA is definitely breathtaking, isn't it? You know what's great about this scenery is it loads up in no time at all. <laughs> Yep, yep, apparently I landed. There's the rudder controls. Isn't it so easy to, to uh, tell where the runways are? That's why I use the, uh, the radar view so I can see <laughs> am I actually facing the runways or not. Okay, there's a runway there. Yeah, RP, I noticed that. I, I saw that you uh, you made a, a mention. I think it was over on Twitter that uh, you became an affiliate. That's cool. Yeah, as far as my internet, it depends upon where I'm at. I can tell you... Uh, streaming Flight Simulator 2 is not going to take much... Uh, much bandwidth, that's for sure. Oh, hey, really? Oh, no problem. As far as the general aircraft, is like no one else using general aircraft or general avi aviation in Flight Sim 2020? Are they all do in airlines. I do want to get back to doing some airlines. And you all know why, right? Because when it comes to landing uh, big jetliners, I'm like the best out of all of them. <laughs> oh, wow, 1.8. Wow, that's, that's not great for upload speed. I've got uh, two mobile devices, uh, hotspot devices. I have a 4G and I have a 5G. And it's uh, something that I've been running tests on while doing my uh, trucking vlog. So I've been from the west to the east coast and I've tested out the 4G and the 5G during the, that whole time. And it's interesting. Generally, the 5G is better than the 4G, but there have been times where the 4G was actually better than the 5G, or download was faster on one, uh, but upload was faster on the other. So it's just, it's been kind of weird. Ah, okay, there is the end of the runway right there. <laughs> I don't like airliners. Too many controls. Yeah, that's the reason why I didn't fly airliners for a long time. <laughs> it's for exactly that reason. 
but I think that's why people like uh, watching I'm out in the grass again I think that's why people like watching the the airliner videos and streams just because they are complicated and it's like they don't want to do it but they'd rather watch someone else uh, do it and of course every everyone else uh, is like a pro and then there's me <laughs> my airline flights are like a comedy show Okay, we are lined up with the runway. May not seem like it, but we are. <laughs> see, we can see it right, right there. Zoom it in. See that? All right, we'll get our trim up here. Oh, flaps are all the way down. We don't want that. All right. we go, we're airborne. Look behind us. This is looking out to the right. That's looking out to the left. Okay, so the heading that we want to go to is uh, 064, or somewhat close to that. I've noticed that the tricks that I have in regards to um, this sim is I have to kind of use the rudder controls to move it just a, you know, a little bit to the right or left. Because if I try to use the aerolons, it, it like slips one way and then turns too much the other way. So the first major city that we'll be going to is Phoenix. We'll land there, have ourselves a little break, and then we'll continue flying. I may actually be going back on the road next week, so I wanted to take the opportunity while I had it to, to do this uh, Twitch stream because I've been 
planning this one for a while now. Have I been able to do much streaming from the road? No, not really. I don't think I've done any streaming while I was on the road. I There might have been one time where I did it when I was on a, uh, a 34 to 48 hour reset, but I don't remember. I think there have been times where I was going to get ready to do one, but my upload uh, speed at the time was just bad and it wouldn't have worked. But it's just, it's hard. Uh, it was something that I was saying at the very beginning uh, of the stream. Was that sometimes with all that driving, uh, I might have a couple of hours of a break before I have to sleep for another, you know, eight hours. And it's kind of hard to do a... It's hard to, to get everything set up and do an actual flight within a two-hour period. Because uh, I actually have flight controls now. I actually have a yoke and rudder pedals and a throttle. I've, uh, I actually now have that. <laughs> it's like, surprise! It's like... Just took me forever to finally get it. And it's like a whole new experience when you have those flight controls. It takes a little bit uh, getting used to. So how often do I get home time? Well, lately I've had a lot of home time because we had to we had to sell our house uh, and we had to move a lot of stuff um, into storage uh, and you know into our new place where which is a uh, a fifth wheel. So we're in a fifth wheel RV and uh, we're in a in an RV park. Uh, but this is this is going to be something that's going to be beneficial for us because uh, months from now we'll be able to move and change locations. Uh, if I'm uh, out there on the road, uh, my wife can actually take you know, the fifth wheel out to an area that I'm at. So if I'm over on the, the east side of the U.S., you know, she can move uh, the RV closer to where I'm at, and it's a lot easier um, to be able to spend home time with her instead of trying to get loads that are going to, you know, take me uh, back out west. And it's something that we've been wanting to do for a while. But we're taking things uh, one step at a time right now. So... Uh, we're not going to do any... Uh, any crazy moves at the moment.
there's a lot that we gotta a lot we gotta learn there's LA Los Angeles International right behind us the Pacific Ocean out there And that brown, that's Los Angeles. <laughs> that is the detailed scenery of Los Angeles that you're looking at right there. So the first uh, vor that we're going to is Pomona, uh, and then we're going to Palm Springs after that. Let's just pull that up here real quick so that way uh, you can see. So here is uh, the map. I painstakingly copied and pasted all of these maps together so that way I could figure out uh, what my flight path was going to be. So you can see we've got Pomona. We'll be going to Palm Springs, going through Blythe. This is the I-10 in case you're wondering. Phoenix. Then going up to Globe, Sholo, Gallup, over here to Albuquerque, Amarillo, Texas, Oklahoma City. Then going up this way, Tulsa. This yellow means that this scenery was never made. Uh, Monroe, Springfield, Missouri, St. Louis. <laughs> do, you know, do you see the difference here of the maps? <laughs> On the west side, they were like very, very simply drawn. But then these maps are the ones that uh, are much like the ones that you uh, get out of the uh, the flight simulator box. So we got St. Louis. Then we'll be going up here to Champaign. Not going to Chicago. Uh, Champaign. And then coming down here to Indianapolis, Cincinnati. And coming straight across over here to Washington, D.C., Baltimore. Uh, Philadelphia, uh, and then New York, then across uh, Long Island over here to Martha's Vineyard. So that is the actual plan. Look at that. <laughs> this is all of the Flight Simulator 2 maps for the Commodore 64. This area here is scenery disc number 10, never made. Scenery disc number 8 right here, never made. This area here is scenery disc number 12. It was made for the Commodore Amiga and the PC, but it never came out for the Commodore 64. So yes, we do have a plan. I have indeed come up with a flight plan. <laughs> We're going to keep the altitude around 3,000. And this old simulator, it doesn't really make sense to really go all that high. It's not like the scenery gets any better the higher you go. <laughs> and it's hard to determine how far down the ground is uh, with this type of scenery, so 
Try not to make it any more complicated. We're looking out the windows in case you're wondering. So Pomona is 10 miles away and I'm thinking that's what that gray uh, gray blob is out there in front of us. Not, not here, but uh, out there in the distance. There is an airport of sorts there. That looks like that is the Pomona Airport. Uh, let's see. That would be number 16. Laverne. Brackets? Bracket, California? Laverne? Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> Let me see. Let me look this up here. Laverne Airport. Bracket Field Airport. KPOC. That's in Laverne, California. There we go. Got some white lines out there. I believe that is the I-10, Interstate 10. Well, hello, shots. Good to see you. Decided to go back to my roots. <laughs> Good old classic flight simulator. Two. <laughs> Sub logic. No, no. This is somewhere else. Uh, this is a completely different uh, type of stream. This is going from Los Angeles all the way to Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. So going coast to coast on this one. I'll show you a map here in, in just a moment. I'm gonna change the, uh, the nav navigation frequency here to Palm Springs. Seventy three miles away. All right. Let's get ourselves a heading to go on here. I am uh, wanting to get back to the uh, world tour. 
the Killer Gamers World Tour, but this is something that I've kind of wanted to do here, this type of flight, for a while. Just something, something crazy, something epic. Just going from coast to coast. Trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get myself to the uh, the right of the zero eight. Oh no! Oh, oh, hold on. Actually, that is actually where we want to be, right there. The most joy joyless or pointless thing in a video game, going coast to coast in Flight Simulator 2. Yeah, well, you know what? Why not? That's what I say. Why not do something that uh, most people probably won't do? Okay, so here is the map. I painstakingly put all this together. This is all the maps from sceneries 1 through 6 on the west side, and then 7, 9, and 11 on the east side. Uh, this area here is scenery just uh, number 10. So that whole yellow area was never created by Sublogic. This area down here scenery disc number eight then up here in the upper right is scenery disc number 12 which was not created for the Commodore 64 but it does exist for the Commodore Amiga as well as the PC and so we are starting off right over here started off from Los Angeles and we just reached Pomona and Oh, well, I guess I was going to go to Riverside, but I put in the VOR for Palm Springs. But, yeah, it's along the way. So, the first major city that we're going to be stopping at... Well, I was planning on Phoenix. <laughs> we might have to stop in Blythe. I don't know. It depends upon when, when I need to take a break. But, you can see... We'll be going up to where the I-40 is and going through Albuquerque... Amarillo, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, up here to St. Louis. Then I've got us going up here to Champaign, not Chicago. It's just a li little, little bit too out of the way. Uh, then down to Indianapolis, Cincinnati, all the way across over here to Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, right across... Uh, Long Island over here to Martha's Vineyard. That's the flight plan. And I had put all these maps together uh, for this stream so I could figure out which flight path I was going to be able to take. Because trying to look at the maps individually and trying to place them all together is, yeah, a little challenging. Text Rich. Well, hello. Good to see ya. <laughs> Loading times in a game. Anything from EA. That's funny. RP Sims. He's going to grab some food. Take care of things. Yes, good to see you too. So, what airport uh, do we have right there? Let me 
go ahead and pull up uh, let's see that is I don't know it might be Riverside let's see number 17 on the map. I think that's Ontario International. Yes, it is indeed Ontario International. In case you are wondering, I can show you what I'm looking at here. This right here. So, Ontario International, you can see the, uh, the two runways being crossed by another, so that's Ontario right there. And we got 60 miles until we get to Palm Springs. And I believe that white line uh, out there in front of us that we're following, sort of, is the I-10. I really wish all uh, the western uh, scenery disc set was made for the Amiga because I would definitely I would definitely do this flight on the Amiga And I have flown coast to coast before with uh, the Commodore 64, but that was back. That was back then uh, that I did it. You know, and I had I had all the scenery discs and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, would it be cool just to fly from one side to the other? When a big city came up, I got all excited. <laughs> oh, look! There's Phoenix! There's St. Louis! It especially got exciting because when you're out out, uh, out in the middle of nowhere and you just see like maybe a white line and uh, green, <laughs> when you start seeing the big brown areas, it's like, oh, that's a city! <clears throat> Look out the uh, left side there. Looking behind us at Ontario, not Canada. <laughs> On the Ontario airport there in California. And then here is the map view. See that that big brown area to the to the to the south. Let's we're not really going south, but towards the bottom there, that is Los Angeles.
You know, back in the days of the Amiga or even the Commodore 64, EA or Electronic Arts as it was known back then, they they weren't that bad from what I remember. They actually had good quality stuff like Deluxe Paint and I think Deluxe Music Construction Set. Those were those were uh, good programs from what I remember. But then they got too big for their britches and they started buying everything up and yeah, then they just weren't so good after that. I've been hearing that the uh, the latest Sims expansion was it, is it like high school years or something like that is apparently buggy. Which is a shame. I was actually looking forward to that expansion because that's something that uh, uh, something we haven't had in the Sims game before. So I was actually kind of looking forward to that. And I'll probably get it. I'll just wait for it to go on sale. <laughs> I suspect there's more airports on the default Amiga disc than people think. I remember slewing and finding stuff that should not have been there, including the combat area. That's out in the world somewhere. You know, I thinking that I might have come across that myself too but as far as more airports I don't I don't know it does come with it does come with five default areas instead of four though so it still has Chicago New York Los Angeles and Seattle but I think the Amiga adds San Francisco to it I could be mistaken, but I think there's five default areas with the Amiga instead of four. Either that or San Francisco was separate. Maybe it was San Diego or something, but I just I remember there being five. Well, if they did scatter enough airports to go coast to coast, that would be that would be cool. But I don't know. Maybe they put them in there like Easter eggs or something like that. I don't remember ever looking up any information. It's worth a try. Could use uh, the sub logic maps. And just either uh, use the coordinate system and and uh, slew there, or uh, or fly in those areas and just see if maybe they maybe they hit some airports out there. That'd be kind of that'd be a, that'd be a fun little Easter egg if that was the case. So here's a little something that I'll have to... We're going to have to switch scenery discs. 
and I'll show you whereabouts that's going to be. Okay, so right after thermal, right around this area here, we'll have to switch over to the scenery disc that has uh, Phoenix and stuff. And I th think that is disc number two. And so yeah, you'll you'll get to see us load up scenery discs and stuff. If you ever come across those airports, write the coordinates down. Cause those coordinates they should come pretty close uh, to Flight Simulator 4 and 5. I think 98 still used the coordinate system. There's like one that would use the uh, X and Y before they started using um, the North and East, if that makes any sense. One five point two for Thermal, California, I believe. I'll just change that here. Whoops. Yeah, one one five point two doesn't come up. Maybe it's too far away. Maybe it's 116. <laughs> it's hard to read because it was printed on here with a typewriter. Let's try 116.2. That was it. All right, so it's 116.2 to thermal. And then somewhere after that, we're going to have to load up the next scenery disk. Huh. That might be... I do recall what you're what what you're talking about, but I can't seem to place it. I know I was having problem with the PC version of Flight Simulator 2 because the the scenery disc images uh, there's like blocks of data that were missing, and so there are chunks of scenery that are missing uh, from from the Eastern uh, scenery disc. So I don't know if that if that was it or not. And there's definitely more airports on Flight Simulator 2 than there was on the Microsoft Flight Simulator 1.
but you definitely got me interested. <laughs> Definitely piqued my curiosity. I'm just looking out the left side there. See, California, look how detailed that is. <laughs> turn off the fuel and just just head east? Why would you turn off the... Oh, I see what you're saying. Turn off the option to where the fuel goes down. Basically in this, you would go into the menu option and uh put zero for reality. The reality uh, option is what uh, causes it so where the lights work, the dash lights work, and where if you run out of fuel it actually runs out of fuel. And also magnetos. So it's the one one option that you need to actually turn on in order to be able to uh, start and shut off the engine and stuff. And I remember when I was uh, playing this back in the day, it's like I wanted to turn off the engine and, and going into reality mode was the only way to do that. But something that I don't know if you knew or not, and I don't know if this... this happens on the Amiga version or not, but on the Commodore 64 version, whenever you go to the menu and come back out, it fills up your uh, fuel tanks. So it, that happens every single time. And in the instructions of the scenery discs, because none of the airports on the west side have any fuel boxes at all, so it says go into the menu option and go back out and it will fill your tanks. <laughs> so they they actually give you instructions on on, on how to fill up your, your aircraft if you're uh, making those long flights. are 32 miles away from Palm Springs. There is an airport up ahead. What is it? I'm not sure. Maybe we should get out and look. <laughs> uh, let's see. According to the map, I think it's Airport 28 Banning. I think that's the Banning Airport that's uh, out in front of us there. <laughs> well, hello, Aero Bisector. It has been a long time, hasn't it? Where have I been? Trucking. <laughs> That's where. For the past year, I've been a truck driver. Uh, and it's been very hard to do live streams, uh, being on a truck. I am still a truck driver. I'm just 
not driving at the moment. Uh, I think I might actually be going out on the road next week. It depends on whether I pass my DOT physical because I actually actually failed it uh, the first time. So I had to get new glasses. Uh, my blood pressure was too high, so I had to get medication to take that down. So that is where I've been. I have been making videos and stuff, not as many as I used to um, over on my YouTube channel. And I have a trucking vlog and everything on the uh, YouTube channel, so if you if you if you ever wanted to know what it was like to be in the trucking business but were afraid to ask, well, it's all on YouTube. <laughs> and you can see just how crazy and insane uh, my trucking journey has been since last year. Yep, this is a very old flight sim. This is actually something that I've been wanting to do is just fly from one side of the US to the other side of the US on on this classic uh, sim which is the first simulator that that I flew. And in regards to P3D, because I see that you put that in there, I still have um, prepared version 4 and version 5. And I did actually record a, uh, a couple of flights using both of those. I just, I have not uh, edited them together yet. <laughs> I have a video of uh, Flight Sim 2020 that I released on Friday. Those flights uh, haven't been able to do uh, but two of them, but they are based on my trucking routes. So I have a flying series that's following the same route as I, as I took um, as a truck driver. Yep, I did see that GSX got released, and I'm hearing some complaints about it as well. Uh, from what I've been able to see, people are saying that uh, it only works at default airports and it does not work with like uh, payware, paid airports or anything like that. I don't have it myself. Um, it is something that I would like to get, uh, but before I do, I want to get the PMDG 737 before I get GSX, and I am also wanting to get the the CRJ from Just Flight. Those are two that I've been uh, those are two that I've been wanting to get uh, for Flight Sim 2020. Oh, okay, Aerosoft. I, I was going to say Aerosoft at first, and I was thinking, no, that's that's not it. Maybe Just Flight sells it from Aerosoft. Okay, yeah, there is that was that was another. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the BAE-146 or not. I've heard about the Phoenix. Oh! But that reminds me, uh, I have, for X-Plane, I bought the, uh, the Airbus, uh, oh, the expensive one. <laughs> Try to remember, uh, what it was. Tallest, the Tallest A320, that's it. Yeah, actually, uh, no, not FS Labs. Yeah, the tallest. For x -Plane. yep. I have not even flown it yet. 
it was on sale when I got it. Because I it was something that I wanted to get, so I got it when it was on sale, and I have not. Uh... Okay, not the most expensive, it, but it was. It, it's one of them. <laughs> I mean, it's not cheap. But it's supposed to be a really good aircraft. Nineteen point eight miles away from Palm Springs, California. If you look out here in the distance, there's a little bit of brown out here. That is going to be the city of Palm Springs. This white line is the I-10. That's Interstate 10. I was wondering if you still had P3D or not. I still have it. I try to be careful with Flight Sim 2020 because you could buy all of these add-ons and stuff and then they make a major update and then it breaks everything. And then you have to wait for those things to get patched. Which well, you know, some of the companies have been really good about it, but... That's one of the things I don't like about Flight Sim 2020, is all the forced updates. I don't like that. I mean, if I've got my sim configured and everything's running perfectly, uh, it's like, don't fix what's not broken, you know what I mean? Oh, now that's good to know in regards to updates being delayed, but they can't delay it for everyone, you know. Eventually they're going to have to release it, so you still have to, you still have to depend on the developers of those add-ons on them updating it. Oh, I don't know, I know it's been a while, but I actually, since the last time you saw me on a stream, but I actually have flight controls now. I have a yoke, I have pedals, I have a, a throttle. Um, it's, uh, it's the Logitech uh, version. I don't have that, uh, I don't have that other one that, that you see uh, people talking about. But yeah, I actually have flight controls now. No, I didn't before. What I had before was game controller. Which is, uh... <laughs> I thought in my bag over here, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. It's right, sitting right next to me. Yeah, this is what I was using before. It's got tons of buttons on it, which is what made it uh, which is what made it great I had everything at my fingertips yeah that's what I was using before I didn't have an actual yoke or anything <laughs> are you kidding I wouldn't say sad I was doing pretty well with this I was doing pretty well with this thing It's actually, I'm finding it a little bit harder to actually fly with the flight controls. The actual, the actual flight controls, at least with Flight Sim 2020. It, I don't know what it is, but like with general aviation, 
I can't seem to slow that damn airplane down, even with uh, flaps and stuff. But I've I used uh, prepared with my flight controls, and everything worked the way I would think it would work. But for some reason, with Flight Sim 2020, those planes come in like a bat out of hell, and trying to get it to slow down before landing has has been a relative challenge. I haven't tried my flight controls on X-Plane yet. I'm st yeah, I'm still getting used to it. Like the rudder, rudder pedals, for example. Um, every time I spin it, and what I think is to the right, the plane goes to the left. And whenever I do this, it like goes the other way, so. <laughs> Once I'm on the ground, I can get it to slow down, but it's like, it's just slowing down for an approach. It just comes in so quickly. Even when I've got full flaps on, even if I've got the nose up and I'm, you know, and flaring, it's just going really quickly. And I remember that that was, that was a bug somewhere along the line. And it may, and, and I think it has something to do with third party aircraft or something, so... I need to move around and try some different aircraft and see if they do the same thing or not, or if it's just certain ones. So that out there is Palm Springs, California. And this brown and white thing right there, that's not a building. That is an airport. <laughs> you may be asking yourself, well, what airport is it? Well, let's see. If I'm reading this correctly, it's number 30. Eh, just Palm Springs Airport. Eh, nothing fancy. That's a good picture of GSX. I love I love GSX for uh, P3D and, and FSX. It's actually a, it's actually a real fun uh, add-on. That's that's why I, I do want to get it for uh, Flight Sim 2020. Oh, you know what? Maybe you can help me on this. For some reason, the ATC, you know, the default ATC with Flight Sim 2020, I got no sound. I've got no voices, nothing. It, I mean, the ATC works, but there's no sound. And I used to have sound. I used to have voices, and now I don't. And I don't know why. I've tried it uh, offline mode. I've tried it with the Azure I have voices installed, uh, but it doesn't use those voices anyway. But yeah, it doesn't work. I've gone through like the options and made sure that volume was up and everything. I can't figure it out. I have another ATC program anyway that I need to install, but it was just nice to have the default ATC, you know, when you're in a pinch and just want to do something quick, you know? Uh, and yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's, it's not working for me. I, I don't know why. Oh, let's 
let's see. I am trying to find Us so I can see what we're. Oh, I just messed up. Okay. It's scenery disc number two. That's what we need. Scenery disc number two is the next one that we'll be loading up here in a bit. Yeah, I've checked all the sound settings and sliders and... Uh, the Flight Sim 2020 video that I uploaded on Friday... Um, actually go through and show all the settings and stuff that I've got. I'm hoping someone that watches the video might actually be able to see if see if they caught something that maybe I didn't catch. Well, at the moment, I haven't been using ATC at all. <laughs> I've just been... I've just been doing, doing the flights. Just with just old-fashioned uh, navigation. No, I haven't seen the trailer on that. Really? Oh, fly-by-wire. Okay, FBW. I had to think about that for a moment. I mean, the mod that they've got for the fly-by-wire, and I do have that mod, although I need an updated version, is very good. Yeah, the A320, I've got that mod. Uh, I need an updated version, but yeah, I've got that. We got 17 miles. You can't see it, but I'm, I'm watching it. <laughs> Let me see if I can maybe pull it up here. Or actually, I should probably mute that. That does look pretty good. Wow, and the fact that that's going to be free, that is... 
That's pretty awesome. I see a lake out there. Uh, let's see if I can figure it out. Where is that? San Francisco, Los Angeles. Ah, okay. That looks like the Salmon Sea out there. This uh, blue little thing right here, just below the horizon, that looks like the Salmon Sea. Based on the, based on looking at a real map. So, there's the lake there. That's the Salmon Sea. Yep, I read about the 40th Anniversary Edition. We got an airport. I was not expecting to see an airport there. Number 29. Okay, so that is thermal out there. Just after that is where we need to load up uh, scenery disc number two. It may take us a bit to get the Phoenix. <laughs> We've been flying for about an hour and 24 minutes. And Phoenix is just the first stop. Okay, we're going to want to follow that line there. That is the I-10.
Flight Simulator 2, back before there was autopilot. <laughs> Okay, I think we can load up scenery disc number two now. Because we're like right on the edge of it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a snapshot. We're using the Vice Commodore 64 emulator. So what's nice about this is I can take snapshots just in case something were to go wrong, um, we can go right back to where we left off. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to type in Blythe. Then we need to go ahead and put the next image in. Let's see. Scenery disk number two. Attach. And then we do control E. You gotta love the retro disk sound. <laughs> there we go. Current databases are Phoenix and Albuquerque. There we go. Everything is all loaded up. And we're continuing with the I-10 there. And the Salmon Sea is still there because it's part of uh, scenery disk number two. But if you look behind this, you can see there's the edge of it. It's where that white line stops. Okay, so Blythe is 117.4. We are 58 miles away from Blythe. And we need to go at a heading of 086. And I didn't know this, but one of my flaps was down. <laughs> because I was hitting a key for my rudder and it wound up being my flaps instead. After Blythe will be Buckeye, Arizona. 
and that is one one zero point five, I think, or point six. It's hard to read it on the map, but they do have a list of stuff too. I typed that list. Let's see, Buckeye, Buckeye, Buckeye. One one zero point six, okay. So let's go ahead and put that into nav number two. One one zero. Point six. Okay, too far for us to pick it up right now. We do have an airport out there in the distance. Uh, let's see. That's not Blythe, it's something else. Well, that can't be right. That's not Wickenburg. Wickenburg's not located there. Maybe that's an 18. Chiriaco Summit? <laughs> I, I don't think that's right. Well, I know Wick is not along the I-10, so that, that stuff... And it's in Arizona, and we're still in California, so that's not what that is. It's a small airport. The important things that we're going to want to do is look at the altitude 
of these areas that we're flying in because you can't really tell with this simulator how far the ground is. According to the scenery disk map information, the altitude of Buckeye is 1,023. Phoenix that we'll be landing at is at 968. So as far as the altitude that we've got, which is 3,200, we could probably go just a little bit higher than that, maybe 3,500. So, we've got another 43 miles to Blythe, and we still have some time after that to Phoenix. So I'm going to step away here for a little bit, let you all enjoy the wonderful scenery uh, that is before you from the Commodore 64.
Ah, I am back. Hello there, Frozo. Good to see you. And here we are with Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. Where are we going? For the moment, uh, we're flying to Phoenix. But, let me show you... Oh, <laughs> you're going to get a kick out of this. Wait to see how much work I put into this. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the map. It will bring you great danger. <laughs> Here's the map. So, last night I painstakingly gathered all of the images of the Sublogic scenery discs, 1 through 6, and then 7, 9, and 11 and did the best that I could to get them lined up. Some don't line up perfectly, so I had to kind of tweak it a little bit. <clears throat> and Scenery Disc 12 is not uh, on the Commerce 64, but you'll notice that I did put the default area for New York in here. So that's the default map for that. But if you ever wanted to see exactly what was not covered on sub, the Sublogic Scenery Disc, here you go. I was really surprised by this area down here. That if you wanted to fly on the southern part of the U.S., there's a good portion there that's not covered, but it's not too bad. It's not like this area right here. So you could, you could actually get away with... Uh, flying all along the coast here which I I thought that was cool but up here on the north part you know where North and South Dakota are at and Montana yeah none of that is is covered up here in Michigan <clears throat> so and this is where we started off with right here in uh, Los Angeles and I used uh, the actual scenery disc for it so we just had runways uh, did not have any taxiways or anything like that and we're taking this route uh, from Pomona to Riverside uh, Palm Springs Thermal Blythe we just recently crossed over uh, the uh, the river or yeah so we're in Arizona now Right now we're heading to Buckeye. We'll land over here in Phoenix and take a break. <clears throat> and then the Globe, Sholo, Zuni, Gallup, New Mexico, Albuquerque. Just following the I-40 here to Comcary, Amarillo, all the way to Oklahoma City. And then following the I-44, Tulsa, um... Neoshi, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Springfield, Missouri. Forney. Then, <laughs> do you like how it goes from uh, the hand-drawn lines and circles to these? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it took a little bit of doing to get this lined up as close as I could. Uh, St. Louis up here to Champaign. We're not going to go to Chicago because it's kind of out of the way. And then Danville, Indianapolis, Cincinnati. Then kind of across here. So you can see where some of the maps join right here. And there's there's a there's a copy. This airport and that airport are the same. Uh, this one and that one are the same also. I just need to kind of go in there and erase it. <coughs> But yeah, coming across like this, going to Washington, D.C., up to Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia, then over here, John F. Kennedy. I was going to stop there originally, but then I decided, eh, let's just keep going. So, uh, 
across Long, Long Island and landing here in Martha, Martha's Vineyard. Eventually I'm going to update this map to ha that has uh, Senior Edition of 12 on there. So why did I do this? I wanted to get them all together so I could figure out what path I was going to take because the maps by themselves it's kind of hard to figure out a path just on its own because you're not quite sure how they line up and it it took a bit just to get all this to line up so it made sense So this is Interstate 10 here that we're looking at. And that there is the Colorado River. So that's the border of California and Arizona. We're in Arizona right now. That's the Salmon Sea back there in the distance right there. I thought it was uh, pretty useful to, to put all that to, together. Yeah. <laughs> At first I was trying to figure out what path I was going to take, but putting all those maps together really gave me an idea of the areas that are actually covered by the sublogic scenery disks. And other than that northern portion, where Montana and Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Michigan, other than that part, you've almost got full coverage of the U.S. Almost. Oh, Buckeye finally tuned in here on Nav 2. It was taking a bit. Okay, so 110.60. Let's go ahead and change it over here on Nav 1. Here we go. We are 68 miles away from it. We'll center the uh, the OBI Omni bearing indicator so we know which uh, vector to go. All right. Due east, apparently. So in case you haven't noticed, I am not in my truck at the moment. <laughs> oh my, the distance measuring is 666. It, it was at 66.4 now. Let's say for a moment this flight was kind of demonic. I think I'll be back on the road next week. We'll have to see. I'm in the process of getting my medical card renewed.
There we go, a heading of 091. That's going to get us the Buckeye. 64 miles. So after Buckeye is Phoenix, and we will land there for a break. Uh, and Phoenix is 115.8. like they did this with the no it's 115.6 I had to look at the the list of uh, airports and vores from the scenery disc 115.6 okay so nav 2 is set up and ready to go so once we see the 2 indicator on that we'll know that it's within uh, within range. We're currently flying over 120 knots, I would say maybe 122. And we've been flying for uh, roughly two and a half hours. So I'm actually kind of curious if you were to take general aviation aircraft from Los Angeles International and start flying towards Phoenix, Arizona at around 122 knots, would it take you about the same amount of time? Here's our map view. What you're looking at there is nothing there for a moment. Uh, I-10 there in the middle. I-40, which is over there to the left. The I-8, which is over to the right. The blue squiggly line is the Colorado River. And that lake little blue uh, mark over there to the left. Is that Lake Havasu? I think that's Lake Havasu, but let me double check here. Nope, it's not. It's Alamo Lake State Park. That's what that is. Since we can't see how far above the ground we are, with the exception of the altimeter, what we have to do is look up the altitude on the uh, the list for the scenery, the scenery disk. And so, uh, what was it? I think Buckeye was over a thousand, and Phoenix is around 980. And I was just at 3,000 feet, so I'm going to increase our altitude to 
somewhere between three and four thousand. And we should have enough fuel to get us there. I'm having to switch fuel tanks back and forth. And I've got the realism motes uh, on, so when you run out of fuel, you run out of fuel. But there's also the drift on the uh, the compass. See, I just went to 92. <laughs> I'm constantly going back here and doing a control D and a control B to uh, make sure those are set. Update them. I'd have to say the stretch between Blythe and Buckeye is probably the longest between the waypoints that I've been using. Last time I did a coast-to-coast -coast flight on the Commodore 64 was back when it, you know, was actually out in the 1980s. So I thought it would be kind of fun just to do that, you know, one more time. in 2022 because, you know, why not? <laughs> How many flights am I anticipating? Jeez. That's a good question. I don't know how long or how many hours it's going to take. Uh, well, I'd say the next flight would be Phoenix to Albuquerque. So that would be flight number two. Albuquerque to Oklahoma City would be number three. Uh, maybe Oklahoma City... Springfield, Missouri, possibly. Might be a fourth flight. Or I could just do, do it all the way at St. Louis. That would be number four. And then St. Louis to Cincinnati would be flight number five. Cincinnati to Washington, D.C. would be six.
And then I think a short flight from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia would be number seven. Because I would want to keep... Because there's going to be an area of no scenery somewhere between Philadelphia and New York. It's not... It's not I've, I've done it before. So, and I remember it, it... There wasn't... It didn't last too long. But yeah, but I'd rather that last flight be from... Uh, Philadelphia all the way to Martha's Vineyard. So... What, seven flights? All in a Piper PA, uh, what was it, a 181? <laughs> and how many hours would it take? Oh my goodness. I think by the time we land in Phoenix, it's going to be about three hours for this. So if there were six more flights after this, that's like 18 hours. Could easily be a 24 hour stream. Yeah, I think I think it could actually be done in 24 hours. The real question is how long will it take for me to be so hypnotized by the uh sound of the <laughs> Commodore 64 engine? and the detailed scenery that's out there in front of us there. <laughs> yeah, coffee or something. Don't want to ra raise my blood pressure. <laughs> It would definitely be fun to do a 24-hour stream, but I just I don't think I'm going to be able to to do it because I've got to I've got to take a break and and step away and take care of stuff. But I might come back later on and and uh, and continue. And I'm recording them also. And, uh, and they'll show up on, on YouTube. One thought that I had, though, is putting them all together in one actual video. It would just be a, a long play. An 18 to 20 hour long play of Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. Yeah, long play. I've, some people have actually, I've seen some uh, Let's Plays that were around 10 hours or more. And they got the whole thing on one video.
Yeah, the funny thing with the uh, YouTube algorithm, <laughs> you could have a 20-hour video up there, and you might get like a 1% audience retention rate on, <laughs> on a video like that. Just a two or three hour video on Flight Simulator 2 is not going to have a whole lot of retention to it. <clears throat> I'm surprised someone hasn't come on to the stream and say, why are you playing this? Why don't you play the new one? <laughs> gained a new viewer not too long ago who was watching every single Commodore 64 flight sim video that I had put up on the world tour. He was going through every single one of them and watching them. I thought that was pretty cool. So imagine once I get this get this up on YouTube, he's going to have another 18 to 20 hours of stuff to watch. Yeah, my old videos were a little different back then, weren't they? <laughs> Seems like a lot has changed since those since those old videos. This stream right here, I bet I've actually been planning for the past month or two. This was the uh, the Twitch comeback stream that I wanted to do. I wanted to come back and do this coast to coast flight with uh, with the Commodore 64 because I knew nobody else would do it. And the other thing too is that the the World Tour series that I've got, which kind of goes, it just kind of does airport hopping, like within the the scenery areas. While this one is more of more uh, longer stretches of flight. At first, I thought about using uh, the Sublogic. A jet program because it would it would go a lot quicker
jet? Um, I can't remember, actually. There may have been a combat game with it, but I knew I know that you're able to just um, you're able to use the scenery discs with it and fly, and that's what I did. Switch fuel tanks again. Switch it over there to the left tank. I think it's more just a jet simulator. I don't know. It's been a while since I messed with it. Yeah, the Thunder Chopper game, I, I do believe the scenery does work with that one, too. Let's see if I can find some information about jets. Uh, let's see. Released in 85 for MS-DOS. And the Commodore 64, 1986 for Apple II, 88 for Atari ST and Amiga, and 1989 for Macintosh, and the NEC PC. Gameplay. Jet is easier to fly than Flight Simulator 2, and is compatible with its scenery discs. The player may choose from an F-16 Fighting Falcon for land missions, or an F-A-18 Hornet for missions starting at sea from an aircraft carrier. The player can also practice flying and aerobatics in free flight mode, dogfight against Soviet MiGs, launch strikes against land or sea based targets, or watch a demo. For either combat mode, the player can select which missiles and bombs the plane will have. So yeah, it is a combat, combat game. But then there's the free flight mode, that's the one that I use the most. Most of the indicators on a real jet fighter are present in jet. Altimeter, heading, frame, loading, gear, status, brake status, fuel level, radar, altitude, and range. The player can turn a few of these on and off. The controls consist of either the joystick or numeric keypad for steering and other keys to handle the chosen optional indicators. Landing gear, weapons, and eject button. <laughs> There's an eject button. Different perspectives can be chosen. A view from the control tower instead of the jet's cockpit. So, that was new. That was when that was first added, apparently. I wonder why they call jet the friendlier version of Flight Simulator. Alrighty, we'll see you later. It looks like the Phoenix VOR has finally come into range. It's on nav too. We need to go to a heading of zero eight four.
So this brown out here is Buckeye, Arizona. Phoenix is 68 miles away. So close yet so far away. All right, we got another 64 miles. I'm going to use this opportunity to step away for just a little bit, but I will be coming back uh, just before we get ready to land.
All right, folks, just checking back with you here. We have 39 miles until we get to Phoenix, which is... That's it up there in front of us. And we just passed Buckeye. That's it right there. That is the Buckeye Airport. That's right, just one little runway. That's all it is. <laughs> And I'm keeping our heading around 084. Locked into the uh, Phoenix VOR. Because it's sitting where the airport is at. So hopefully this will help us uh, get lined up relatively decently with the runway. But we still got 37 miles to go. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll be back with you and let you all enjoy the relaxing sounds of this Piper Archer engine. All right, back here with you. Got about 31 miles to go. That airport up there ahead, the dashed line there, 
There's a little bit of brown in between. That is the Litchfield Park Airport. And this brown out here is Phoenix. And if we take a look... ...at the map here... ...you'll see that's Phoenix there. This is the I-17 right here. I-10 continues through Phoenix and goes down to Tucson. This is Interstate 8 over here to the right. And you can't see I-40. We're not... You're able to see I-40 before when we were out uh, in this area here closer to California, but now you can't see it. Yeah, but if you were to turn this around where this is going up and this is going to the left. Compare this with the map of Phoenix and you'll see how that uh, roughly matches <laughs> based on early, early 80s technology. So far, it's been 3 hours and 15 minutes for this flight. So I'm thinking we'll land within the next 15 minutes, which would make this flight from Los Angeles to Phoenix three and a half hours long at about 122 knots. Not sure how uh, accurate that would be with an actual plane, or that would be interesting to find out. How close was this simulator based on the technology in regards to a one-to-one -one scale of the Earth? Well, they didn't have the Earth uh, mapped out. They just had uh, the United States, sort of. Twenty five miles to go. We can look out our windows here to the right, and then over to the left. That white line right here at a diagonal that is going up to Flagstaff.
Uh, when I I wonder if I should replicate it in uh, Flight Simulator 98 or wouldn't mind doing it in Flight Simulator 4 with Sublogic USA and East and West disks. We gotta switch our fuel back over to the right tank. They are getting low. Seventeen miles from the airport. We should be able to see it soon. Litchfield Park Airport there behind us. That's the I-10. That's going that's looking behind us to the west. We are going east. Let's go ahead and get lined up here. Looks like we'll be landing on eight right. It's hard to tell if you're lined up at the runway or not this far back because of the, the way the graphics are. But there are ways to to check that. One is by looking at the angle of those lines. method is looking at the map itself unfortunately we're too far away to actually pick up that airport on that we'll be able to do it when we get closer At 10 miles, let's go ahead and drop one degree of flaps.
just in case something goes wrong I want to do a snapshot of this sure looks a lot closer than what we are. Let's go ahead and drop another thing of flaps. I think we're approaching the airport a lot quicker than I thought. Looks like we're lined up. I'm hoping we'll land here at the uh, airport. On the runway. That'd be nice. Trying to keep us centered on this thing. There we go. We have landed. just park over here on the grass. <laughs> we didn't have taxiways back in this day. Alright, we can shut the engine off. Ah. So, we are here at the Phoenix Airport. Just take a look at the map here. So you can see we landed. That is Phoenix with the I-17 this way going to Flagstaff. The I-10 here coming in from California, which also starts to go down south, meets up with the Interstate 8 which also goes out to California and Yuma and this goes down to, to Tucson. 
that's we're facing east so if you want to pull it up on Google Maps and see how it compares you can certainly do that now you may be thinking how do you fill up your plane because there are no fuel boxes or anything in, in these uh, uh, airports on the west uh, sublogic scenery disk. So what you do is you go to the uh, menu right here and then you just go right back out. Now it'll it'll not only will it fill you up but it also moves you too. <laughs> As you can see it moved us a little bit. Uh, it doesn't doesn't move you far. See there we are there. But it will move you. But you can see that the tanks are now full. So that's it. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll stop here because that was an awfully long uh, flight on a very very old simulator. But uh, I'll be I'll be back um, again to uh, continue the flying because hey I want to actually do this go from the west coast to the east coast did it long long ago would love to do it here in 2022 because why not all right well thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next flight. Have a killer, awesome day.